Hey Siri, turn on the wine cellar light. Okay, the wine cellar light is on. Hey Siri, set the family room thermostat to 74 degrees. Okay, I set the family room thermostat to about 74 degrees. <laughs> So it's been about a year since Apple released HomeKit, and so far not a lot of apps or devices have taken advantage of it. And this is largely due to the fact that most of these home automation companies are still fighting to be the sole home automation product in your house, rather than working together as part of a network of home automation systems. Fortunately for us, there's a solution to this problem, and it comes in a little open source piece of software called HomeBridge that you can install on any Linux server on your home network. In my case, I have a home automation system from a company called HomeSeer that runs on a Windows server. And so in my case, I just installed Hyper-V and virtualized a copy of Ubuntu Linux on that box. And that makes it really simple. So follow along with me and I'll show you how to do it. The first thing you'll want to do is install Node.js. This is required because HomeBridge is a Node.js application. The next thing you'll want to install is libavahi. This will allow your Linux box to speak Bonjour, which is an Apple protocol. The final prerequisite is to install NPM. HomeBridge is distributed as an NPM package. Now we'll install HomeBridge using the npm install command. Now that everything's installed, you should be able to change to the HomeBridge directory at tilde forward slash dot HomeBridge and then just execute HomeBridge. If everything worked correctly, HomeBridge will run and then show you the default access code. There's not much we can do at this point since we haven't installed any plugins or the configuration file, so go ahead and hit Control c to exit. So now we are ready to install some plugins and the configuration file. And so it depends on what product that you have, but basically it's the same for everything. If you type npm-install-g and then homebridge-dash and whatever the name of the plugin is that you want to install. So homebridge-nest, homebridge-liftmaster, or homebridge-sonos, and on and on and on. Now, the interesting thing is, is that one of the products we're going to talk about, which is HomeSeer, doesn't have a plugin for HomeBridge, but it does support JSON commands over HTTP. So that way, all we have to do is install HomeBridge-HTTP, and we can write a little bit of JSON to translate. If you're having any trouble following along with this video, head over to thegeekpub.com. I've got a detailed article on how to install HomeBridge. The config.json file is made up of three basic sections. The first section is the bridge section. This is where you define things such as the name of your home bridge along with the password required for your iOS device. The second section is the platform section. This is where you'll configure all of the information on your plugin such as Nest or MyQ. You'll need your username, your password, and other information depending upon the plugin. Visit the NPM website to find the instructions for your plugin. The third section is the accessory section. This is where we'll define the controls for devices that don't have plugins. In our case, HomeSeer, and we'll be using JSON. I like to create my config.json file in a text editor and then paste it into the terminal window using Nano. But you can most certainly type it right into the editor of your choice, such as Nano or VI. Okay, so to configure our home seer devices, the first thing we need to do is enable JSON if it's not already enabled. And you do that by going to Tools, Setup, and then go to the Network tab. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure the Enable JSON checkbox is checked. Now we just need to get a reference ID for a device we want to control. So just click on the device, go to the Advanced tab, and the very first line should be the reference ID for that device. Write that number down. Now back in the config.json file that we created earlier, we just need to add a little bit of information. The first thing is your home seer username and password. The next is the name that you want Siri to know the device by. And the next two parameters are your on and off URL. The only thing you need to change here is the IP address and the ref ID that we took from the device earlier. Now head over to the Apple App Store and download the app called My Touch Home. You'll need this app in order to pair Siri with HomeBridge. There are other apps that will perform this function, and you're welcome to explore them. 
Click the Add Accessory button. If HomeBridge and your phone are on the same network, you'll see HomeBridge in the list. Tap it, and when the warning box comes up, tap Add Anyway. Enter the PIN code you used in the config.json file. It should still be on the home screen of your Linux console. This will complete the pairing process between HomeBridge and Siri. So once the pairing process is complete, all you need to do is wait about four or five minutes for all of this information to sync to the cloud. And then you should be able to do things like, hey Siri, turn off the wine cellar light. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. So if you're like me, you've already realized this is nothing more than an HTTP shim. And that means you can pretty much control anything on the web that has a web page. So for example, there's nothing that would stop me from saying, hey Siri, publish my latest blog article. Or, hey Siri, turn on this latest AdSense campaign. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Again, if you found anything in here that was difficult or that didn't work for you, head over to thegeekpub.com. I wrote a detailed article on how to connect Siri to HomeBridge. Also, if you found this video useful, please do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Well, thanks so much for being a fan of my stuff. See you in the next video.